Beavers cannot stand the direct heat of the sun unless they are in water. <gasps> Me neither. Here's the best part. Older individuals often become dangerously belligerent. <laughs> Are we beavers? What are we gonna do? Oh, hey, hey everybody. Welcome <laughs> to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Hannah Hillam. I'm Kava Taharian. Welcome back to the show, learning about our GSA friend and warrior, Hannah Hillam. Speaking of Warrior up for or those. warrior? Worry both. But both. Is there a difference? I think if you're a worrier, you tend to maybe transition some of that anxiety into becoming a worrier and advocating and speaking oh, up for people. Yep. You're right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Welcome How back to the you? show. We are recording this uh, fake right after Comic Con. Uh -huh. That's when this episode will come out. Oh, man. We just We're flew so from San Diego and bore my arms tired, et cetera, so on my, and so forth. I am filled with Taco Bell and. Yeah, French, French, friendship. A whole weekend of friends. That's, That's all that great. mattered was we just we ate it. We were supposed to go exhibit <laughs> at, at Comic Con. We just went and sat at Taco Bell for we four ate and a half there days for straight. Four days from morning till night. Yeah, it was a really fun time. I feel yeah. a lot better about myself. Me um, too. Anyway, thank you. And it, again, this is weird because we recorded it beforehand. But thanks. Assuming you came, and if you didn't come, sorry you missed out on yeah. us eating at Taco Bell. It's like you didn't even care about this podcast or you or Taco come. Bell. Or Taco um, Bell. I've said Taco Bell so many times that they have to <laughs> legally pay me now. Yeah. If you say it three times in a mirror, the, oh, the, the ghost of Taco like Bell dumps nacho cheese on you and says, you're now our spokesman. Listen, I'm waiting till the end of the podcast to do that because that sounds like a nice way to relax. Well, you're going first today, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was no transition. I just needed to say it. Okay. No, that's good. You're, you're becoming a really good else? host. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you. No, honestly, I think I was thinking about, I put this in the show notes. I'm like, we've been talking about this, about San Diego for so long that I'm like, what even is, what are we who even about? are we after this oh, show is over? I'm at CatCon this weekend. Oh, are you doing CatCon officially? I am doing CatCon. Okay. Uh, Which means I, you're staying at our place this weekend probably. as uh, this comes out. That's fun. That'll be a so, fun time. So um, I'll be doing CatCon. It's in the Pasadena Convention Center. And it's just, I, you know, I've never been, but I'm assuming it's cats. Uh, and, I, that's um, a safe assumption to make, yeah. Yeah. What if it wasn't? Are you like their <laughs> keynote speaker? <laughs> no, I got I got waitlisted. I'm like, look, all I do is draw cats. Please, you're like let my me book in. is literally called Cat People. Cat People, let me in. <laughs> Sorry, I mean to scream, but yeah, I'm gonna be a cat con. I don't know my booth number yet, but it's ten by ten, so I gotta fill it with something. Ten by ten, that's massive. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't have that much stuff. You want to come? Um, you want to come? Yeah, maybe I'll come for a day and just draw cats to compete with you in your own oh, booth. Oh, please do. Maybe I'll bring Zola. She would not like that at all. No, She'd no. be really angry. Um, but you can go meet celebrity internet cats, you know, and um, Jackson like Galaxy, always dreamed of. I think, is going to be there. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is either. But anyway, go check out Hannah at CatCon yeah. in Pasadena this weekend. That sounds catarific. Yep. Or it could be catastrophic. It's going to be gonna both. I'm going to stop myself there. Anyway, uh, yes, as you said, I'm up first this week, unfortunately for our listeners, but <laughs> thankfully. Look, they have to suffer to, everyone has to suffer before the good part comes, you know? That's true. So my tab, uh, I actually, oh, this one's going to be fun. It's going to be a little bit wacky and nutty. Better be. As you've come to expect from me at this yeah. point, let's be real here. It's nothing strange. Most of, of what ordinary. you do is just nonsense and I love it. It's all nonsense. Yeah. Uh, my tab begins with uh, the article is simply titled Why 76 Beavers Were Forced to Skydive into the Idaho Wilderness in 1948. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man. Yep. Man. Okay. Why? Why? Did they all want to? Why did they do it? Tell me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Are they you're just creatures? Like, like you're like what am i doing here why why <laughs> no, is no. this happening why did i do this podcast i've just i'm like because i do this anyway oh, wait hold on i gotta stretch my skin a little bit because i feel like my face is tight okay so first of all i want to know if beavers have the choice over life and death if they could choose are they suicidal or are they just wanting a thrill mm -hmm. that's a good question yeah but <laughs> let's take a step back oh, okay beavers am i right yeah oh my cool. gosh cool they're, they're uh they're great. They uh, they're really helpful, like leading against the fight against climate change. Apparently, that's a they whole are. other thing. 
Um, they're really good at building stuff. They get yep. angry at water. I too get angry at water sometimes. Uh -huh. if it's, it's, it's somewhere where that's close to me. I don't like leaks. It, I need to stop yeah. water from leaking places. I can yeah. relate. I like their teeth. I, I respect those teeth. Their teeth are cool. Um, anyway, no problems with beavers, at no. least on my end. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, apparently, there used to be a shit ton of them in the United States. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, oh. Some reports say as many as like a few hundred million what? at one point. Uh, so again, there's like various go reports. Go out and see some beavers if you're just like out in the woods. Yeah, or I mean, just if you think about the state, think about the United States, right? Um, formerly before it was America, it's just all streams and rivers yeah. and beavers. It's just, and every bears. one of those has got like a beaver. Just uh, beaver is like in every road and or not road, every stream and river and like. Anywhere that there's water, there's a beaver chilling, doing his thing. And there are basically as many American citizens exist now, there were beavers, just to put it into perspective. Could have been a different world. They were the beaver kings and queens of this great nation. It was a beaver boom. But of course, with every beaver boom must come a beaver bust. Oh. And no, I'm not talking about beaver titties, unfortunately. Although oh. that's something if you... <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? There's a town in Utah called Beaver, and they have a taco mm -hmm. shop called Beavers. So... Oh, that's cool. I like that. Um, it's just dirt. It's dirty, and every single thing in there is like about anyway. It's bad. It's not. It's not clean. Is that part of or oh, dirty? As in, oh, okay. I see. You're like inappropriate, dirty, not yeah. like uh, uncouth. Not like it's uncouth, not like no, unsanitary. No, I don't care anything about what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so everyone go to Beaver, Utah, eat some tacos. <laughs> go talk. <laughs> so. Anyway, there was the beaver boom, as I said, mm -hmm. and then there was a beaver bust. And how do our stories always go? Colonialism? Europeans showed up. Oh, yeah. Racist. They start building cities mm -hmm. and trekking everywhere and looking for gold and shit. And suddenly beavers were like, dude, nope. what the shit? These <laughs> illegals are coming into our country and taking our jobs and building shitty peanut M&M style dams in Johnstown that kill yeah. tens of thousands of people. How They're not even certified. <laughs> <laughs> this is giving me energy. Continue. Uh, on top of that, uh, beaver pelts become a whole thing in Aww. the 1800s, remember? so, Dude, what's with white people and skinning stuff? I guess, actually, I guess that's everybody. Yeah, no, that's not specific to white people. That's all of them. And so, meaning all people. So mm. suddenly, beavers are getting slaughtered left and right to be worn <laughs> as clothes. Probably they're being sent back to Westminster Abbey to mm -hmm. become new doors of some sort. And yeah. The beaver population continues to dwindle as the human population grows in the States. Yeah. Bummer. And this problem continues <laughs> into the late 1940s. World War II mm -hmm. has finally been fought and won. It's over. Jonathan the Tortoise has killed Hitler. The Michelin Guide is back to printing restaurant reviews. And people in <laughs> Idaho <laughs> are looking City. to expand across the state. Presumably, these are... I guess Napoleon Dynamite's ancestors. Sorry, yeah. I don't know anything else to oh, do with worry. Idaho. I do. I do. All, all I know is that and then potatoes. That's literally <laughs> That's all, all I know. I know. apologize. Yeah. <laughs> That's Which, all there is to know. <laughs> actually, okay, for the sake of pop culture references, let's just say it's Samwise Gamgee, <laughs> a.k.a. Alyssa. Uh, <gasps> Samwise marries Rosie Cotton and they get restless after a couple yeah. of years and they want to expand out of the Shire into Idaho because <laughs> Sam heard them hills are filled with sweet, sweet taters, taters. precious. <laughs> <laughs> taters. <laughs> and he wants to put that fry sauce on them that he keeps hearing about. Mm. I had some fry sauce yesterday and it gave me a stomach ache and I <clears throat> loved it. Uh, oh. I still don't know what it is, but I saw references to it when I was looking up stuff about Idaho, which yeah, is dude. a fry sauce is an entire channel on our Discord. Go join the Discord where you are Utah from and Idaho. Mountain people. West, come join the Fry Sauce Freaks tab on Just our Discord. Leave your teas at home before you leave, show up to the channel. <laughs> leave, check your teas at the door, and yeah. uh, make sure you're modest. Dress modestly, and don't say the <laughs> f word. <laughs> None of those shoulders can show in there. Anyway, oh. and so my family's from Idaho as well. There's a there's a bunch of them oh, I didn't know that. Oh, That's yeah. also part of it. Okay, there, they were potato farmers. <laughs> Just living up to every possible stereotype you can. Yeah, I love they it. They were like, Utah's way too boring. We're going to get even yeah. more boring. And by just going north. Uh, again, I, I have no point. Of, I don't know anything about Idaho okay. beyond what I've read for like a, a glance or a quick search on. Oh, sorry, a cursory glance, a, a quick search on the Internet. I'll keep so, it to myself until later. 
Continue. Yeah, I mean, you can say, again, I, I don't know enough to make fun of Idaho or anything. Okay. So. Anyway, so Sam and Rosie and a bunch of other Idahoans, I guess that's the term, uh, they want to seek out new homes in the town of McCall uh-huh. uh, and around Pyatt Lake. Do you know those places? Uh, are they? Is it Southern Idaho? Hang on. I have to find out. My family's yes. from Burley. <laughs> Burley. Burley, Idaho. Uh, McCall, Idaho. Around Pyatt Lake. P-A-Y-E-T-T-E. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me see the map. Sorry, I'm getting into Idaho. Being Idaho. No, I'm just oh, laughing. No, no. At my family's from Burley, Idaho. I'll be like, oh, yeah, well, my family's from Scrawny, Utah. <laughs> oh, I never thought about the word Burley being an actual word until now. It is. Burley. Um, no, I am Burleys. not familiar with this area. We were in southern Idaho. But this I seems see. like it's northwest. They're all trying to expand and they're like, okay, well, we want to go into this area and maybe build some houses and and expand and whatever. They go in and they're trying to like, you know, farm whatever, potatoes and various pipe weeds like Long Bottom Leaf, Old Toby and Southern Star, all the ones that they brought home from Mm -hmm. the Shire. And um, I want those. There's still a bunch of beavers there. They're just they're all over the place. Good for them. I, that's what I think, too. And they're just, you know, they're beavering it up as usual, stopping water, whatever, like just chopping down trees, luring having a burly young, old time. You're luring young British children out of a wardrobe into their house. Is that a beaver story that I Did don't remember? Did you ever read Lion, the oh, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Oh, from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Is it a beaver? Is that, I thought, uh, I don't it's remember a, the beaver. No, there's a part of a, it's it's a the fawn, beaver family. I it's a fawn, but then they're like, come, there's these beavers that are like, we'll take care of you. <laughs> I might be making this up. I'm like, are they bad beavers or no, are they fine. like good beavers? They're, they're good fine. Beavers, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I read it in like the fourth grade and then I think I saw the movie when it came out and I forgot it. Anyway, so the beavers are there. They're doing their thing. And uh, suddenly they start doing a lot of damage to irrigation systems and like Uh orchards. And everybody that moved over there started complaining to the state like until finally the fish and game department staff had to figure out a way to transplant them to a more, quote, suitable habitat. Oh, Sidebar, I was very offended by that line yeah. specifically because you came into their land. <laughs> this is their suitable habitat. It is the most suitable, like the place where they live, you know, you that's their suitable place. habitat. You can live anywhere. Yeah. They suck. But for the purposes of the story, we have to move forward with the events that happened uh-huh. rather than getting angry. But I digress. Okay. So, and these are super rural areas, mm-hmm. right? There's right. there's no, nothing's there. There aren't, There's like barely any roads you can't just like drop ship a bunch of beavers using media mail, you know, like stuff. You can't just buy stuff off of stamps.com and send mm-hmm. them off. You got to go in with like a with like horses and carts and shit. Like kind of some kind of like pilgrims. Yeah. And, like and also this is 48. It's not like or 49, 48, 49. It's not like there's not like a Jeep Wrangler that you could just be like, oh, no, we're going to go like over these. This is nothing. I mean, there's cars, but like they're not that great. Mm hmm. And uh, not to mention, beavers are even worse travelers than you and I. Huh? They're they're fussy. They can't poop either. They can't shit when they're on the Ugh. road. They uh, they sleep through alarms and always wait no. to the last minute to buy tickets. And they complain the whole time how expensive it is. <laughs> how expensive and they, it is, but if they had just bought the tickets months in advance, they, they wouldn't just, be complaining. Exactly. If they had just and then they hate waiting in lines at the security <laughs> airport. They should have just like gotten the badge on the line before the comic con started. <laughs> Mail it to me. I should have done that instead of waiting in line with a bunch of artists. Doesn't matter. That was last week when Mm Comic-Con happened. Now you're out of it. I'm fine. Um, They hate waiting in lines at the security checkpoint because they know they'll inevitably get randomly screened because of racial profiling and none of these systems have ever stopped further attacks and even the Department of Homeland Security has acknowledged all this is pointless and yet we continue. And then you just have to spend like five extra hours at an airport every time. You have to put on extra time, dude. That sucks. It's the worst. Beavers Uh. hate, hate, hate that. Yeah. And they I understand. Hate racial I relate. profiling. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so, a person named Elmo Heater <laughs> from the <laughs> what? Elmo Heater. H E T E R. Header? Is it header or is it Heater? Um, I don't care. It's me. It's Heater. <laughs> it's his name's Elmo Heater. <laughs> Elmo Heater. <laughs> My name's Elmo Heater. <laughs> This is my best friend, Adolf Saxophone, who I learned was the inventor of the saxophone just Adolf before this Sachs. recording. Adolf Sax, I'm sorry. Yeah, because I found my high school saxophone glamour shot. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> anyway, the whole thing. So Elmo Heater 
from the Idaho Fish and Game Department described in a 1950 edition of the Journal of Wildlife Management, quote, <laughs> beavers cannot stand the direct heat of the sun unless they are in water. <gasps> Me neither. Oh, it gets better. During transportation, they must be constantly cooled and watered, <laughs> and sometimes they refuse to eat. <laughs> Me too. Here's the best part. Older individuals often become dangerously belligerent. <laughs> Are we beavers? Basically. Oh you know what? I would definitely describe myself yesterday as being dangerously, dangerously belligerent. I did a piece <laughs> for a day, and then I was like, Oh, I could get in a fight with all my loved ones right now. Exactly. That's and why I was laughing when I was Connor. writing this up. Yep. This is so relatable. I can't handle it. I can't handle yeah. this. This is They're me. They're from Idaho. Yeah. They're from... Dangerously belligerent. Rough trips on pack animals are very hard on them. Yeah. Horses and mules become spooky and quarrelsome when loaded with a struggling, odorous <laughs> pair of live beavers. <laughs> I'm a beaver at heart. You're a beaver. Maybe you should go to BeaverCon instead of CatCon this week. Mm, all right. There you go. A new market. Anyway, these <laughs> problems involve further handling and too frequently result in a loss of beavers. Yeah. So old Elmo is like, it's not going to work. We can't just strap him on They'll the back just of die. Dis- They'll just die despite oh. Nikola Jokic's best efforts of, you know, getting the best possible horse and doing this. Still, beavers are not up for that. No. So they're like, shit, what do we do? <laughs> then they remembered that they had just fought in a world war and they're like, oh, right. We maybe we have some leftover supplies, so they go, they open the pantry and they see a bunch of extra uh airplanes and like parachutes yeah. crammed in the corner. Wet and they're like, together, yeah, dude, yeah, right. Rosie is riveting them before Still? she gets her brain taken out. <laughs> before she gets um, <laughs> and they're like, oh shit, we could totally use those, that'd be awesome. And they don't quite know if it's gonna work, so oh. first they do a couple tests with like dummy weights or whatever, and those worked okay. It was fine. and But they had to actually try it with a real beaver. Oh, no. So they get this older beaver whose name is Geronimo. Yeah, it is. And they take him and shove him into a box, <laughs> fly him to an altitude of about 600 feet, and threw him out of the side of the airplane. Did he? What happened to Geronimo? Not just randomly. Oh, they didn't just throw like, a box out with no parachute. Throwing a box with a beaver in yeah. it to his death. They're like, we just. <laughs> we, he didn't pay us his gambling war. debt, so we yeah, just threw him out the airplane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Say goodbye, Geronimo. Oh, they got to have like action. They want to fight again. They want to see things die again. Yeah, Whoa. but thankfully he landed safely and he was able to get out of the box. He looked and so. <laughs> I this poor this. bastard, they did it over and over and over again to just like quadruple, quintuple, whatever, sextuple check. Make sure. Him, the same beaver. Over and over again. It was just <laughs> over and over. Geronimo is just getting thrown out the uh, the plane over and over. <laughs> and every time it worked in the sense that Geronimo did not die. However, <laughs> I would like to think for a second about Geronimo because let's remember that yeah. humans let alone beavers, are not airfaring yeah. creatures. No, we belong now, on the ground. Yeah, exactly. We are not, normally we're bound by the laws of physics uh-huh. and our anatomy, but like Icarus before us, we harness the power of flight to pursue our narcissistic dreams of grandiosity and have only gone higher and higher yes. in an attempt to outshine the very gods that created us. Yeah. But Geronimo is just a beaver. He just wants to build a dam. <laughs> he just wants to stop water. Yeah, uh, and, literally all. Have you seen that Instagram of that person that's like has like a rehabilitation center for beavers? No, I love <laughs> to see it though. I'll send it to you. But there's the one they always have videos of these beavers just collecting like household objects and making walls with them. Like it's just what they do. They're like, ah, I, I gotta I put stuff on top of each love other. It. I know. It's it's like uh, they're not hoarders. They're like functional hoarders. They're like yeah. uh, efficient hoarders. Like, I'm yeah. hoarding for a reason. Mm. I'm, they're builders. They're like, every yeah, day you and I wake up and we do something because we don't mm. know how to sit still. Not at That's all. That's how beavers are. I pace most of the time. Yeah. There's always something to create. Yeah, so, exactly. Love beavers. Geronimo, I can only imagine, somehow becomes self-aware in this process of getting thrown out. He's like, what is this flying machine? What is <laughs> flying? What is memory? What is happening? I did not evolve to ever in- encounter this. But <laughs> thankfully, he makes it and he's okay and he's oh. alive. And um, that's the only explanation that I can Poor think Jerry. of for how he was able to deal with it. So he does so well that the test becomes the basis for transporting an additional 75 beavers out of the area. We're so stupid. <laughs> so two by two, 
Oh, wait, I was going to send you pictures. I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right. So look at this guy on the right with that top hat and the cigarette. He's the most like 1948 looking individual I've Let's ever see. seen. Let's see. There's a couple of, there's like three dudes Whoa. holding it up in a box, which looks like <laughs> it's holes in the in the beaver box, but they just look like they're bullet sprays from yeah. a shotgun. It looks like they put it out in a field and it just loaded it up with bullets. Yeah. These guys look like they're all doing their best like oh. Lee Harvey Oswald impression. That's what this oh, yeah. photo has. That ger- that beaver looks harrowed. He's like, he's just like, oh, you're pulling me out. Okay, all right. Like, look how they're like pulling him or pushing him out. And he yeah. just looks like he's sick of it. I'm projecting. I don't onto know if that's beaver. Geronimo or not, but uh, okay. it is a beaver. Look at these guys. Sure. So here's a. Uh, there was what? like a feature of this in Popular Mechanics at the time. So there's a bunch of. There's like <laughs> a little blurb about it. It's like moving day for the para beavers. <laughs> the para beavers like parish. Oh, Thomas Stimson Jr. This beaver's a smart one. <laughs> I'll tear down part of his dam and put the trap near the break. Wow, what in the world? Here's a distinguished fellow who builds dams and fur coats. Note the sorry, hold on. He, he builds build dams fur coats. and fur coats, meaning he has skin. Yeah. Okay. Note the hand like four feet, the webbed hind feet, and the two long teeth that can fell a tree. Those feet are scary. Anyway, oh. it does basically start so then two by two they start packing them up and throw them out of the plane over the chamberlain basin in central idaho's sawtooth mountain range which is now called the frank church river of no return wilderness area are you no, familiar with that are you kidding why is it called I, that? I have no idea i don't know that's so scary that's that's what them said that's what they say that's yeah. what they say uh, all but one made it safely to the new area. Apparently, one guy had a complication, or like he, he, he got survived. out of the box as it was as it was like coming down, and then it was like he jumped or he fell. Oh. They don't know. So one, unfortunately, there was one beaver casualty. Oh, okay. You know what? In so, war, there's always got to be sacrifices that are made. Exactly. You gotta. What is it? If you're gonna make an omelet, you gotta break a couple of eggs. You gotta um, flatten a few beavers as they fall to the ground. Flatten a few yeah. beaver, a pair of beavers, but. Our boy Geronimo, yes. he was given special treatment for his services. Good. Elmo, your friend Elmo, Elmo Heater said, you may be sure that Geronimo had a priority reservation on the first ship into the hinterla- hinterland. Uh, and that, Interesting. And that three young females went oh. with him. Ooh. Beaver town. So even... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Even there, he stayed in the box for a long time after his harem was busy oh. inspecting the new surroundings. However, his colony was later reported as very well established. That's the quote. Dude, that's the life. It's like, here, you went through a lot. Here are some ladies. Uh, yes. You can stay in here as long as you need to, but, you know. Again, although alternative take, weirdly condescending. Very. They're like, here's a bunch of beaver ass, you idiot. Oh, you have PTSD <laughs> from being thrown out of the plane over and over and well, over again. you can't again. leave the crate anymore. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're like a whiner. You have PTSD. Maybe you should just oh, Also, up. every time you left the crate, they pulled you up and threw you out again. <laughs> so now you know never to leave the crate. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. They're oh. like, what a bitch. That's so cute. Whatever. Here, I really have sex with these him. three female beavers. Who gives a shit? Who have no idea what you've been through. He's just going to yeah. start. He's going to start drinking after work. He's going to start <laughs> cheating on them with his secretary. Flashbacks of the war. Flashbacks of... <laughs> The ground rushing up at him at an insane speed. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But whatever. The following year, the team revisited their transplanted beavers and found that they'd all built dams and houses, bred, and stored food for themselves. Hey. It went off relatively without a hitch. It's okay. Okay. But they weren't. Now, they were just in a new home. For they were just in a new home. Beavers are apparently, like, as long as they didn't get too traumatized in the process... They'll just be like, okay, cool. Like it's 7 a.m. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go start grabbing stuff and immediately start building a dam again because that's my that's hard coding. That's all I know how to do as long as there's water. And mm-hmm. like you said, you don't even have to have trees, just no. random shit. Just stuff. Just stuff. If there's stuff that they can hoard and pack around, they'll do yeah. it. I was attempted, or I, I was tempted to go insane on learning a bunch of stuff about beavers for this tab, um, which would have been the normal path that I go down. Oh, but yeah. I took a left turn and oh. wanted to know more about um, times that animals or that animals had been thrown out of planes. <laughs> <laughs> if anything is more you, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's been discovered. Like, I don't think I think that might be the peak cave right there. It's like, I need to know what else has been thrown out of planes. Exactly. And you know what? So do I. I really need you to tell me. So there's a few. Okay. Um, 
And rather than getting into all of them, I, okay. I found this story, which I thought was fun. So I, so basically, you're getting a two for one today. We're getting two mini tabs instead of one giant tab. Sorry, I'm yawning, but it's not you. Listen, I'm going to throw you out of a plane with a parachute in a box. I with would welcome Three that. other beaver, Just part of a beaver me- harem. <laughs> <laughs> Just put me in a coffin and put holes in it. It doesn't matter. I'll Directly die Directly in into over a bog. I'll yeah. drop it in. It'll be perfect. Oh, yes. I learned... <laughs> about <laughs> sorry i'm laughing about you saying i'm gonna throw you out of a plane that just like process <laughs> into <for me>. a bog <laughs> okay. so i learned about a scrapped world war ii plan that you're probably thinking cats or dogs uh-uh. but actually it's a lot weirder yeah it goes back to our friends on the moon no 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 Bats? The old bat boys are ah, back in town. Hey, wait, there's also beaver boys on the moon too, remember? Beaver people? Oh, that's right. Oh my God, this whole time, all I was thinking of was Ger- the beaver Ger- anal gland that has strawberry flavor uh, from the other one. But <laughs> I completely forgot about beavers. About? I texted Holy my crap. friend, I'm like, by the way, your daughter's uh, listener mail is being read on this episode, and I'm sorry we talk about balls the whole time. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> she, great. She just left. Anyway, so. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot about the beavers on the moon. I accidentally tied this all together completely yeah. unintentionally. Imagine like Geronimo, he retires to the moon. They, they send him That's to the tr- moon with his that, harem. They would send him like, a, <laughs> they would shoot him like in a spaceship over and over again and then bring yeah. him back. And he's like, I'm tired of space Into travel. His polygamist beaver settlement on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Taking those Idaho roots right up to the moon. Yeah, I love it. There was this dude who was named... I believe it's Lytle Adams, L-Y-T-L-E. So Lytle Adams was a dental surgeon from Irwin, Pennsylvania, okay. who I guess sort of knew First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. And Lytle cut up mouths all day for his job job, of course. But <laughs> as soon as the clock struck five, he was like, I'm out. It's time to go work on my side hustle. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And you know what a side hustle is? He's like, I got to invent shit that can kill hell of Japanese people because this was right after Pearl Harbor had happened. Oh, he was fueled by revenge. He was fueled by revenge and rage. So many people. And he was just like, got to think of a way to kill people. Got to think of a way. Got (laughs) to think of a way to kill more people. And he remembered (laughs) he had recently taken a trip to Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico. And he said, have you been there? Uh, No, but I've seen pictures. It's gorgeous. Oh, I didn't know about it. So oh, it's really apparently cool. there's just a shit ton of bats there. Tons. They had they like go in there and study these bats because they have these insane ecosystems in there that just feed off of each other. Anyway, that's cool. No, yeah. I was just you don't have to say anyway. I was waiting. I thought you had more to say. Nope. I didn't know if you had more bat knowledge. I would that's like. That's all. To know. I, well, yeah, I do. But like, I wa- okay. I watched a bunch of bat documentaries about two years ago. Okay, and, give um, us uh, give us the most interesting things that you learned. I want to know. There's this one. I think it's in uh, it's in Mexico. I want to say Mexico. There's a huge cave system that's that these there's these certain. You know what? I'm talking like I know and I don't. I don't remember. But I think there was like it was a complete self sustaining system in that cave. Like you, those bats did not have to leave. There was certain Weird. things that evolved to live in that cave, and they evolved to eat those things. It was crazy. Like it was that's just self sustaining. Anyway, it sounds also, almost like uh, weird animals that live like at the bo- like fish are yeah. on the super bottom of like the deep, deep, mm-hmm. deep, deep ocean. And they're like, we can't leave here ever. So we just all are weird and luminous and, and the most insane yeah. thing you've ever seen. And I'm fine never seeing what's at the bottom of the ocean. I will never go to the bottom nope. of the deep ocean. Ever I'll never in my go life. to space either. No, thanks. Not interested. Uh, not interested. <clears throat> at least not the way that it's going now. Maybe in yeah. a couple hundred years. But anyway. I don't want to die in an explosion with a bunch of billionaires. Absolutely on the way to Mars. not. No way. I want them to die. Uh, anyway, I was going to say that. Uh, I'll watch as it. As long as I'm not on there, it might be okay. I'd watch the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> he went to the Carlsbad Caverns, like you said. Yeah. He remembered. He had gone there like a few months before. And so he's like thinking, he's like, hmm, first of all, moon bat people, cool. Mm-hmm. Also, bats, they like to roost in places at certain hours of the morning. Cool. That's cool. They just party all night and then like okay. they come home drunk and then they find somewhere to pass out and just plant themselves and sleep all day. Upside down. Kind of love it. He also knew that there were a lot of buildings in Japan that were uh, mo- a lot of the buildings in Japan at the time were made of wood. Oh, yeah. And so suddenly he's like, boom, <laughs> idea. And because he's a red blooded American, he was what? like, what if we took bats and made them weapons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
if it doesn't kill someone, it's not worth my time. Exactly. And immediately everyone was like, first of all, you're hired. Second, (laughs) you should run for Congress. You had me at you had me at bats. Yeah. You you had me at weapons. You had me at weapons. (laughs) And Lytle had thought. Quote, couldn't those millions of bats be fitted with incendiary bombs and dropped from planes? What could be more devastating than such a firebomb attack? Oh, I, I could think of a couple um, uh, things that are more <laughs> devastating. And they they came out of planes a little while later, you know? Yeah, around the same time, funny enough. Really? Yeah. Those bats are like, whoa, what's that thing? We're, okay, we're going Dude, home. Like, oh, but, shit. Or we've been replaced. Yeah. <laughs> So in January 1942, he wrote a letter to FDR because remember, he was a casual oh, acquaintance right. of Eleanor. So he was able to get a letter to FDR. Everyone he wrote, was. Dear Mr. President, I attach here to a proposal designed to frighten, <laughs> demoralize and excite the prejudices of the people of the Japanese Empire. Ooh, that's wow. That's a direct quote. Uh, <laughs> outlining what he called a practical, inexpensive and effective plan. I, ju- I just I don't know how this is going to go any way but bad. <laughs> like. So FDR opens up and reads this letter and he's just like, dude, bro, straight up. That's the sickest idea I've ever had. I've ever heard. (laughs) Eleanor, get in here. Read this. Dude, this is sick. (laughs) Tell Oppenheimer and his incel brigade to stop working on that nuke and make this shit instead. It's infinitely cooler. (laughs) It is. It's so good. Mm, That was beautiful. Thank you. He's like, bro, we got to do this shit. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. But in an interagency it. memorandum, he wrote, quote, this man is not a nut. It sounds like a perfectly <laughs> wild idea, but it is worth looking into. If you have to start an email or a letter saying, OK, I'm not crazy and neither is this guy, but that means it's a bad idea. <laughs> so FDR greenlit the idea. <laughs> ah! And he sends it over to the Army Air Force and it becomes their responsibility to execute it. As is our favorite in every story, Lytle assembled a ragtag team of weirdos and professionals. Oh, yeah, this is always did, our favorite I part. Did. First is Dr. Jack Von Bloker, a mammologist oh. from the Los Angeles County Museum. Tim Holt, a 24 year old. Steve Holt. <laughs> Steve Holt. <laughs> Tim Holt. <laughs> Uh, a 24-year-old lieutenant pilot turned movie actor. Why is he only 24? That makes me sick. I don't know. The brothers Bobby and Eddie Harold, an ex-hotel manager and workout king. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ex-gangster Patrizio Patsy Batista, <laughs> who claimed to have worked for our boy Al Capone. <laughs> may have been, may have been at, uh, you know, Grande Cheese Company. Yeah. We're not sure. And Ray Williams, a lobster fisherman turned Marine. I, oh, I love all of this. <laughs> This needs to be a movie. Oh, everything needs to be a movie. Oh, but this one especially. Uh, here, I have a picture of them all oh, okay. lined oh, up for like their right. their yearbook photo, where they're like, "We're gonna save the world." <laughs> look at them! Oh, look at them! These are a ragtag group. Very much so. That guy looks sketch. I love him. Ooh, the Bat Brigade. All right. So it was codenamed uh, Project X Ray, and the proposed plan was this. Chemical Warfare Service and National Defense Research Committee developed two bombs that would burn four to six minutes each. Okay. Uh, oh, also, I forgot to add this in there, but eventually later, the guy that invented napalm was part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> I forget his name, but I did read that. Mr. Adolf Napalm. Mr. Adolf Napalm joined the team. So bombs were to be attached to the loose skin on a bat's chest no! by a surgical clip and string. They're just putting in their loose flaps? Hey. Not bra- not eyebrow flaps, not flesh flaps on the eyebrows. But here's a picture of a bat with one of them on there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that poor thing. He just... That poor bat. I'm feeling really bad for the bats right now. Me too. Oh. Um, so they attach this to the bat. Then large containers full of bats will be parachuted out of high-flying bombers. When the containers reached a thousand feet, the bats would be released. They would fly down and crawl into nooks and crannies of buildings where their incendiary bombs would explode, setting off thousands of fires simultaneously. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I want, I want these bats to be okay, but I know they're not. So <clears throat> they go and they get a bunch of bats, okay. as is the case. 
They got a let's see. Here, here's like the bat house. Oh, that's a lot of bats. <gasps> that's so many bats. It's a lot of bats. It looks like if you didn't see the guy standing there, it kind of looks like just a bunch of cockroaches like on a wall. And yeah, you see it, it's it like does. The guy standing there, you're like, no, those are giant and they're not cockroaches and there's thousands mm-hmm, of bats. Mm-hmm. So Ooh, cool. Thankfully for the bats, for the most <laughs> of the bats, okay. not for all of them, they ran into a bunch of problems. Well, yeah. <laughs> First, the bats were Nazi sympathizers, unfortunately. Oh. They didn't really want to fight. They were huge they believers all... in the Third Reich. It was. They always are. We hard. always have this happen. We always have a yeah. hero and then they turn out to like Hitler. Yeah, they were like, oh, it's not Nazism. We're white, we're American nationalists. It's about, you know, pride in our country, blah, blah, blah. It's not about race. It's about not being around anyone that doesn't look like us. Yeah, they had tiki torches in their caves. It was really, it was unfortunate. Yeah. So Uh, so that that, that was the first big problem. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Bunch of incel Nazi bats. In that case, I hope they all blow up. That's true. But. There was that. That was the first problem. They had to okay. try and change the bat ideology and, and, <laughs> and reverse the brainwashing. And to ship bats, they had to be cooled in ice cube trays at 40 <laughs> degrees to induce hibernation. So you just like tuck them away in ice cube trays? <laughs> According to this to these articles, that's why I was like, I don't know. Is this just like the regular one that you pull out of your freezer and they shove them in there? I don't think that's the case. It's got to be a bigger one. I, just, I assume I, so. Oh, the man, this time, this time period was so insane because, like, we we still had all these old school ways of thinking with technology mm-hmm. that was way newer than we could even understand, and so we're like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know, animal warfare. Let's shoot these bat bombs at the Japanese, <laughs> like, because they bombed our islands, and and also uh, hit Eleanor Roosevelt. I don't know, you know, it's just like this crazy, like, yeah, this guy's speaking some spe- some sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the sound of this guy. Listen, FDR, he was just very yes and. He wasn't like no. He was yeah. like yes. Yes, I will run again for president. And yes, I will yes. do it again and again. Yes. So he did it what, four times total, I believe. Four. Was the, uh, he died uh, in the, office. Uh, yeah, the tenure of his, his thing. But <clears throat> the people liked it. And of course, at that time, <clears throat> at that time in the you know 1940s, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't have like great air conditioning. Mm-hmm. You know, artificial cooling was not a thing. Uh-uh. It wasn't a thing that they were particularly good at, and it was too expensive to just go to Seven Eleven and buy, you know, bags of ice over and over again. <laughs> they're not they're not good at uh, keeping things cool. Additionally, a lot of the bats, when they tried to put them into this hibernation state, like in the ice cubes, they just didn't wake up. Oh, so it oh. didn't really work. They weren't good at it. Captain America, but not fun. <clears throat> yeah, or Austin Powers. It doesn't oh, wake why up. Why did and I pee say Captain hours. America and not Austin Powers? Austin Powers because had a you're younger bit- than me. No, I am, but or, no. Or you can say Demolition Man. That's another reference, which is what Austin Powers is ripping off in the first place anyway. Right. Uh, but it goes back uh, over and over and again. <clears throat> That's an old trope. But anyway, mm-hmm. a lot of the bats didn't wake up, so it didn't really work. Other yeah. problems included having the bats fly off and not descend properly or just fall <laughs> when they toss them out. And what, what if, the, if I were a bat, I would be like, where am I? I'm just going to fly around. That's, we're going to be like, disoriented. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I have Just to carry where is this new place? A bomb? Where am I? Yeah. I came out of a a bigger bat, a big metal bat in the right, sky. Right, a gigantic <laughs> mother bat. <laughs> She's abandoning me? Anyway, I'm making this about. Uh, this is my favorite part. Um, during one test run, the bats set fire to a hangar in the staff car of a general who had come to see the show. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. And uh, in the final... Insult. The ultimate problem was that when female bats became pregnant, they didn't. It, it didn't work. Oh, because uh, they're like we're pregnant, so they could only really oh. be effective in terms of being weapons for like five months out of the year. So it was pregnancy discrimination. Yeah, absolutely. They lost their jobs and, because of pregnancy. <laughs> and uh, as far as the thing that attacks me, uh, when agitated and put into new situations, much like the mm-hmm. beavers, the males wouldn't properly eat because they had to record a <laughs> podcast midday and they forgot. Um, <laughs> have you eaten today i had some yogurt earlier but you're such a not bat. a proper meal you're i'm such a, such a bat you're, you're i'm a bat and you're the beaver bat. <laughs> we're we belong on the moon the two genders bats and beavers bats and beavers so shockingly okay after all this project x-ray was canceled in 1944 no, and mean, they did not go forward with it you know probably for the best but so, it would have been fun 
It would have been great. It would have been really fun, not you know, for all the death of the no. theoretical Japanese people if they had pulled it off. But I would have thought it would have been really funny if like the plane caught fire. Actually, yeah. no. You know what? None of this would have been fun None of it because you would have resulted in all these bats dying. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no. Let's Everyone's let's scrap all off. of that. Yeah. Yes, it's better off that it didn't happen. Call but, Oppenheimer again. Tell him to get his dumb dumbs together yeah, and keep working just get on the, the bomb. incel crew back together. Yeah. Start making that bomb. Yeah. Um, this could have been a good movie that Christopher Nolan could have made, but he decided to be, oh, I'm into the theoretical physicist Ooh. instead. Lame. Yeah. 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 Hollywood. Lame. Uh, anyway, that is, there was a bunch more of like animals being flown around and tossed, but uh, in what the are some of time, like, I thought just it quick just... examples. Like, by the way, fun examples, mostly in Utah. I just thought that was funny. I um, am not. So, well, yeah, there's a bunch of open space and it's like a. It's kind of hot a lot all year round. I'll leave you. I did have one quick all last right. one that I can throw in there that I was going to put in for you, but I was going to cut it for time. But I'll say, so the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources uh -huh. needs to restock the state's high elevation lakes and, tr and streams with tiny trout. Yeah. It will <laughs> often dump them from a low-flying plane into the water. Huh. Aerial restocking happens several times a year and has been in practice since the 1950s, according to the division. Uh -huh. Pilots can dump up to 35,000 trout into 40 to 60 lakes within a few hours, a Whoa. process that is speedier and more efficient than pumping fish through a pipe that empties into the lake, the common method for restocking lakes accessible by cars. I've always wondered, like, there's always, like, planes up in the mountains, like, doing stuff. They're doing all kinds of stuff. They're flying right around. They also relocate a lot of uh, mountain goats in Utah. Oh, okay. I actually knew that. Yeah. Uh, and then in the summertime, people are always going missing in the mountains by my house. <laughs> so I'd always go out there and they'd be like helicopters. They'd be like, is it a forest fire or some kids oh, missing? Oh, it's not, like, not kidnappings. These are people who, like, went out hiking and Oh, went out hiking and injured. fell and... Sure, right, right. right. I, I'll tell you a way more personal story that's kind of fun after... But we would be like, oh, there's a helicopter. Oh, it's a bit, oh, what are they doing? Oh, yeah. And there's always like weird stuff. It's like, why are they taking a plane up there to the lake? Now I know. Yeah. They're just, th and you can see videos of it. They're just, they're just <laughs> throwing a bunch of trout out the wimp back of it. It's like, <laughs> it's just, it's like this giant bird diarrheaing like trout into a lake. Oh. Is what it looks like. It's I'm amazing. I'm proud of my home. There you go. Uh yeah, and there's other examples, but those are those are the, wow. the most interesting ones. Anyway, there's wow. there's a lot I could. There is a lot about animals and parachuting and being in planes and stuff that I could go on forever. But I thought I would just leave you with those two funny stories of the beavers and the bats. Which That's again, wild. I foolishly did not remember the beavers on the moon, and I feel very embarrassed. But I was for, halfway you through before me. I remembered. Okay, yeah. good. So it's not just me. Anyway, no. that's my tab. Thank you. It was delightful, um, and I'm really glad that we avoided a lot of death. Um, in the end yes yeah or, and bat death bat death more importantly <laughs> bat death Bats no. in, if you see your bat friends and your beaver friends and they're somewhere where they shouldn't be just take take pity on them because they're yeah. probably frustrated they haven't eaten they're they angry eaten. about having to travel and they're and, like, they're right warm and sweaty yeah, yeah. it's right rough as, yeah, it is and you know don't make, move them out of their houses we're just in don't. their land exactly yeah that's the suitable place for them to be mm-hmm uh -huh. And the suitable place for us to be is in the bog. Correct. Yeah. Speaking of being in the bog, what do you got for us? Oh, my gosh. Nothing. I'm just kidding. Great. Um, Moving on to listener emails. Yeah. So today That's I'm going to read joke. one from... Uh, no. Uh, today I'm going to tell you the story of the rise and fall of a Hollywood starlet named Cynthia. Oh, okay. And how Cynthia changed the fashion industry in some interesting ways so i'm gonna start the story off in 1937 so right around the time they were like should we throw beavers out of planes yeah they're starting um, to think about it should we also throw bats into japan yeah and and we're over in new york city in 1937 and gotcha. seemingly out of nowhere um this new like it girl kind of starts mm -hmm. showing up in these um socialite circles and she's this quiet kind of like i'm gonna go into her background later okay but She's a quiet, kind of like a uh, small town girl, beautiful Hollywood, Hollywood golden age style beauty and looks and um, the the body of a model. You know what I mean? Like those girls who can kind of wear anything and look great. Yeah. And so she was like this. She was like turning heads and she um, didn't talk much. She's notoriously shy, but she was showing up at these parties and everyone started to really be like, oh, who is this? She can wear these clothes. Great. And, mm. and uh, you know, what's going on? 
And she had this exact look that many actresses at the time were going for. And um, she was fashionable, aloof, uh, and always could be seen with a cigarette in her hand. So she, no mm. matter what she did, she was just kind of chilling and with a cigarette in her hand, as is the time. She lived with her mentor, which was this uh, an artist by the name of Lester Gabba. And he was um, involved Lester in that. Lester Gabba. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, what's going on there? But Lester's gay. So, but he was kind of like her handler almost. Like, oh. I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to introduce you to society in New York. Yeah, no, it gets, it gets weird. Okay. It's, don't just follow, you know, trust the process. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm not rooting for anybody yet. I've learned now from all these different episodes. That I'll tell you right now. I you start can being root. like, oh, this person's no, no, no. cool. And then you it's can like root that for person. everyone in this story. Oh, I can. Okay, yes. good. Yes. Yes. Except for Lester? No, no. You can root okay, for Lester. Okay, I can root for Lester. Okay, can I can like everybody. everybody. So Lester good, is this good. eccentric artist who is like, I'm going to give you a chance in the big city. You're going to come with me everywhere. You can live with me. It's fine. I'll show you around. You're shy. I can help, you know, be your voice. So he's kind of like her agent. And so through okay. Lester, she was able to start work as a model. And high-end designers were like, who is this? And they started sending her free clothes because she was just the talk of the town and, and somehow all over the place, but really mysterious and uh, she was the she was the influencer of her day. She, yes, she was. Yeah. Actually, I was going to bring that up. Um, okay. Kind of famous for being hot. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she uh, had her own booth at the uh, booth at the opera because she was like that popular. She was given a credit card to Saks Fifth Avenue to buy whatever she wanted. Oh, she was um, sent. Who's like, bankrolling dr- that? Saks Lester? Fifth Avenue. Oh, Saks Fifth Avenue was just yeah. like whatever you want. Okay. New designers were like. Here's some more clothes. Put them on. Go hang out. Go to the opera in my new in my new outfit. And she's just up she, there. Like, you know what? No more more than being a, an influencer. I'd say she, she sounds like more like a muse. Yes, I'm gonna send you a photo of her at the opera. Okay, and okay. yes, she is. Oh, of course I didn't save it. What is wrong with me, dude? Ah, so much. It's, the, you know? it's that Utah air. It's there's none of it. There's none there's of tra- the Utah there's air. There's trout falling from the sky. I don't even know what to do. Here's the thing. She kind of so she looks kind of like otherworldly, like Taylor Swift or something. And she there she is with her cigarette smoking at the opera. She has like a weird 1930s Taylor Swift look. So she she has she's very popular. She's she's got got everyone loves her. She gets to these modeling jobs. She gets to mm-hmm. um be in like radio shows. She gets her own column in the newspaper. They're like, "You're so beautiful, you get to be on the radio." Yes. And uh and I'll get into here's the thing. Her background has a lot to do with this, and I'm going to get in there in just a minute. Okay. Um, so she was rubbing elbows with all these artists and upper class people, and she was even invited to the wedding of Edward the Eighth, King of England, <gasps> the Nazi one who rode Jonathan as Where, a surfboard. Jonathan was there. Was he at the wedding? No. Well, Man. Cynthia declined the offer. She was like, "No, I don't want to go to your wedding." Or I no, more cool. like Lester was like, "She doesn't want to go to your wedding because." Mm. Uh, Anyway. God, I need a Lester. I need somebody I know. who's just like Dude, plugging Lester. me into everything, taking control so I could just sit in a room and draw pictures all day. Oh, yeah. Right? That'd be the best. Anyway, um, so she was big in New York. And then her national debut came when she was able to get a photo a photo shoot with this famous photographer from Life magazine named Alfred Eisenstadt. And um, okay. he did this whole shoot following her around town at the opera, like on this like carriage in New York and like with di- wearing different things. And it rocketed her to like an internet, like in a in a national sense, to like who well, who's this it girl, and yeah. Cartier and Tiffany were like, here jewels, where are jewels, Everybody. and yeah. and just she received massive amounts of fan mail from all over the world. And at one point, she had her own radio show and column in the newspaper. And she also finally made it to Hollywood, and she okay. appeared in, appeared in a movie called Artists and Models Abroad. That was in 1939, and as you know, what happened in 1939. World War II. Never, no idea. <laughs> uh, you know, there was this. There's this place called Japan, and uh, we dropped bats on them. And yeah. anyway, so 1939 <laughs> rolls around, and Lester is still young enough that he gets in. En- he is enlisted in the army. So Lester is oh. like, I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> Although he's so, not even that young, I feel like 50 year olds were getting enlisted into World yeah. War II at that time. It was like old people. He enlisted himself before he had to get drafted, because then you get a better. Oh, I see. He, he was like, yeah. okay. And so he leaves New York and she's like, what, you know, he's like, what are we going to do with Cynthia? She needs me. I'm her like buddy. And so yeah. he, he says, Cynthia, look, get out of New York, go live with my mom in Missouri. Okay. And so good. Cynthia goes and like waits out some of the war with his mom in Missouri, Mrs. Gabba. And unfortunately, tragedy would strike. 
Oh, no. When Cynthia and Mrs. Gabba were doing one of their favorite things, which was going to the salon, Cynthia somehow slipped off the chair and landed hard on the ground and Ooh. shattered into a thousand pieces. What? <laughs> Cynthia is a mannequin. <laughs> You just Lars and the real real yes. girls to me. This Cynthia was a plaster mannequin okay. that everyone just went along with. So <laughs> Lester made a mannequin and brought her to society parties, and everyone's like, "This is dope." It's literally Lars and the real girl. You've yes. seen this movie, right? Yes. Oh yeah, okay. it's Lars oh, and shit. the real girl, but like a like a gay fashion designer in New York, and it's like this whole Whoa. it was this huge long running joke. Newspapers talked about her as if she were real. People talked about her as if they had conversations with her. She hung out with like celebrities at tables. She was in movies. They would like go. People would be like, "Ah, oh, I'm seeing Cynthia tonight." Like, she was a mannequin. And she she crumbled into a thousand pieces because like she was getting her hair done because that's what she would do because she wanted to, you know her his mom was like yeah I'll take her to get her hair done and so she would go get literally her mannequin hair done. Lester was distraught when she broke into a million pieces and he was like he he had an obituary published because that's how far this went. He was like rest Lester, in peace. Lester, you should have bought a love pillow. That's what you need. You need Le- the pillow version of it, not his, the porcelain his one. His lover was Vincent M- M- uh, Minnelli. Actually. Oh, okay. No oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he speaking was, of Arrested Development. Yeah, speaking of Arrested Development and mannequins, uh, Cynthia took the world by storm because she simply was a really, really well-made mannequin. <laughs> all, all, all I picture now is like Liza Minnelli as a young girl, like walking <laughs> yeah. in and seeing her father, like with a, another man and like a weird mannequin, a and mannequin. they're all like involved. In, and you're like, "Yep, that explains why Liza Minnelli." Yeah, is the way she is. Is Liza Minnelli, who I love. So I'm going to send you this. So the, Ma- the Life magazine photo shoot was hilarious because it started off as like, look at her doing all of her things and look at her with her handler. And then the article ends showing her being taken apart. by <laughs> What the shit? By Lester. And he would take her into piece, put her into pieces and for transport. And this is what she, he would put her literally in a body bag. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> from city this looks city. like true crime. <laughs> no. So there's her feet, her legs. He... He made her out of plaster, but he originally got to start making. I know it's just it's really disturbing. It's really and, weird. Really weird. Uh, and the, the, arti- the article, the ends, trash bag with like the yes. rope around the neck, is yes. like uh, this is very unsettling. <laughs> it says Cynthia comes apart at the waist. Her right leg is joined at thigh. Her hands and arms come off. Her right foot is a seven, and her left is a six and a half. A not abnormal human difference. So he made all these little human imperfections because he wanted to make the most realistic woman possible. So <laughs> this is like Dennis Rader's favorite yeah. magazine of all this, time. And the, the thing that blows my mind the most is that literally everyone was like, "Yeah, we're we're, bu- we're, we're buying in." Like famous people, like f- people with like, oh, well, who was it? It was uh, Charles Dana Gibson was like in on it. The illustrator. He was like, "Yeah, right, I, right. Love, I love Cynthia." <laughs> It's so, like a meme. This is also a two-parter ish kind of thing where oh. I'm going to give you a two for one. So after Cynthia died. Oh, two, not two-parter, two no, for no, one. No. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, after Cynthia <laughs> she died. She quote unquote died, shattered into a thousand pieces. I had to keep that every quote, everything that was ever written about her talked about it. it was It was literally like a thousand or more pieces. The plaster's <laughs> just like, she was shattered on the floor of the, the beauty salon. First um, of all, where did she get her hair done? Right. How far into the hairdo was, did the hair survive? That's the question. Oh, yeah. Because here's the thing. After her obituary, he's like, I still have the mold. I'm going to redo her. And he oh, made her again. placing her. <laughs> that's, that's that's not cool. That's uncouth. Well, so I'm going to tell you about Lester Gabba. And the brain behind the person who had the longest running inside joke in fashion. And okay. how that ended up changing mannequins and how we display mannequins all over the world. So Lester Gabba was born in Hannibal, Missouri to parents who owned a local Hannibal, place. Missouri. Yes. Hannibal, Missouri, the man who makes who takes apart his mannequin. Okay. To to parents okay. like hardworking parents who own a general store and Lester's like, "I don't want to work in the general store. I want to carve things out of soap." And he apparently <laughs> there was a competition during the depression that Procter and Gamble ran. They were mm-hmm. like, hey, soap is cheap to make. Everybody makes some stuff out of soap and send it in. And he made a little sculpture when he was little and sent it in. Okay. Didn't win, but he uh, was, you could say he was pretty much addicted to the soap life after that because he okay. only ever, like his hobby was just making sculptures out of soap. And they were super realistic and it was cheap. And soap was really easy to work with. Like you could mold it and it wouldn't melt. 
And he had a great time doing that. And nice. by the time he uh, moved to Chicago to go to art school, he mm-hmm. was working as a delivery person and doing soap on the side. And he was noticed, his soap sculptures were noticed by this art director who was like, hey, you got some art artistic stuff. Do you want to design some posters for the theater company nearby and also make some soap for kids? <sighs> So Lester starts a half part-time job uh, uh, designing theater uh, play posters and then also mm-hmm. making soap sculptures for children. So that's where he is in the 1930s, early the new 30s. Okay. Okay. He didn't want to be in Chicago. He was like, get me out of this small town. I want to go to New York. Because Lester wanted to be in the fashion industry. I was going to say, he had bigger dreams. He was like, oh, I got to yeah. go be on he, soap wouldn't do it Madison anymore. Madison Avenue. Well, yeah. that's, he, so in the early 1930s, he finally makes his way to New York City. And he almost immediately notices the window dressings um, in all the department stores and how mm-hmm. they were these wax mannequins. Because he gets there in the summer and all the wax mannequins have like started melting. <laughs> and, Ew. and so like their heads are like like flopping. And he was like, this won't do. I know something that doesn't melt. And it's soap. And so soap. He, <laughs> he starts being like, I'm going to make a better mannequin. And it's not going to melt this summer. Ooh, and interesting. he gets yeah, hired. Nice scent. And it's got a nice sense. He, he got he gets hired by Saks Fifth Avenue to create new mannequins for them because he was like, this is not going to happen. It's, they look like they look like um, like just goop in clothes. Like and like one of them. Like, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Once again, referencing <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's business. Yep. Gwyneth, I got to send you a picture of some of the melted mannequins. They're truly upsetting. Um, Which I feel like today you would pay a premium. You would pay extra yeah. for a melted mannequin. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> was not expecting that. No, no one was. Hold on. This I'm... looks like weird AI. <laughs> yeah, except it's wax. He's like, he was disgusted. He was like, this sucks. You're a, you're a high-end clothing store. You got to do something yeah. better. Than... He's right. Yeah, he's right. And so he starts to just make these. He's like, I'm going to make a woman that's so real looking that people are going to want mannequins to look like her all over the place. And so okay. he, that is how Cynthia was born. So he originally made a hundred pound soap model of Cynthia and he realized it was extremely heavy to carry around. And so he ended yeah, up just um, casting it in plaster. So she only weighed like 30 pounds after that. Okay. So he hated these boring window designs so much that he not he didn't stop at mannequins. He was like, "You we need to actually redo all of this. We're gonna make these lifelike scenes where they're wearing these clothes that look like you know, if someone could see like someone wearing a ski outfit, they'd be like, Oh, I'm gonna buy that because I do like skiing. Instead of yeah. just like, here's some clothes, you know, on these like dead looking mannequins that keep melting in the sun. Uh and so he did this whole like marketing thing where it's like, We're gonna make people want to be in those clothes because they look so good and realistic and useful. Yeah. And so Saks Fifth Avenue starts getting these like insane window displays, and all the while he's working on Cynthia because he's kind of creepy. It's it's interesting. Uh, I'll just interject here real quick. Yeah. Like the whole idea of advertising mm-hmm. essentially starts around this time. So it's like yeah, yeah. Uh, effectively like up until uh, not even like ten fifteen years before that, clothes were like this is functional. Purchase yeah. this because it's a function. It was not necessarily aspirational, but like Mm-mm. advertising, and then also like PR. Right. Was the thing that was starting around the same time of like, oh, if you smoke cigarettes, that's like a sign of rebellion because mm-hmm. you're cool. Like, so this is also the birth of that. So it's interesting. I had not thought of uh, how window displays like something that you would pass because it's mm-hmm. kind of like a living billboard, yeah. not living obviously, but it's, like it's sort of the same idea where it's like a that's 3D, creeping. Uh, billboard, yeah. It's 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 like an advertisement. <laughs> right. You, so it's like you know. all that seeping into it where it's like you yeah. can't just have this be look at this jacket on this shitty thing. Like you're trying to project yeah. an image of something to and, get and people to buy it. Like this time everyone was like, I want this American, this beautiful American life. Right, and I right. want to be like yeah. these socialites that wear these beautiful things. So under. Yeah, exactly. Under, underneath all the silly mannequin shenanigans. Oh, Mannequin shenanigans. Mannequin shenanigans. <laughs> oh, I love that as an episode uh, title. But. Me too. Uh, mannequin shenanigans was this actually like this dude who was at the forefront of fashion and how people related themselves to it and how people um, consumed yeah. fashion. Like, yeah, because like the, the everyday person can't go to a fashion show. It's not for them. Uh, mm-hmm. But walking down the street, they can. They can see these people yeah. who look like them. And yeah, they were all white. But, you know, that's how it, <laughs> the people who look like them. In the street wearing clothes that are like, yeah, I can see myself in that. And so he was like 
he's kind of genius. He he did this thing and and he sold it so well by being like, here's Cynthia. She's yeah. the new model. Look how awesome she is. She's smoking a cigarette and I take her everywhere with me. And he, everyone knew him as an eccentric and they just were like, yeah, cool. We love cool. Cynthia. I wonder, this also feels like somebody that John Waters would have thought was hilarious. He, and definitely. <laughs> he, oh, this guy is crazy because throughout all this, he's still just like making soap sculptures on the, on the side. Like his beautiful high That's rise, gorgeous apartment is filled with homemade scu- soap sculptures. <laughs> so, sculptures. And like he has people over and he's just like, look at my soap sculptures and like this mani- these mannequin legs that I'm going to attach to this torso. And <laughs> I think he's kind of my hero because like if I yeah. met him, I, I he was really charismatic. And, and yeah. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's like a big... Uh, yes and it's just yes anding yep. something until He's, him and FDR two peas in a pod yep. they would have been best friends yes anding things until they shatter on the floor yeah he's like what's that you want to drop a thousand soap Cynthia's into the Japanese <laughs> suburbs well do Brain it lit. <laughs> yeah imagine getting hit on the head with just a torso made of soap <laughs> not even a torso like the lower half the lower half <laughs> like the legs that they showed oh so he he didn't just make Cynthia he was like, I'm going to keep- start making a bunch of, they call, he called them Gabba Girls because his name was Lester Gabba. Gabba Girls. Gabba Girls. And Gabba Girls became, every department store was like, yeah, we're going to do this too. And would make like kind of crappy knockoffs or like, yeah, right, this is right. the, you know. And you've seen some of those. You see them in like old thrift shops, like some mannequin yeah. with like a, like a badly painted face. And it's like, that was because they were trying to imitate. <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's my mannequin pose. That was a good mannequin pose. Are you not real? I'm not. I'm actually Kim Control from the movie Mannequin. Oh my gosh! Will you un just take that torso off right now? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me slip into something a little more comfortable. And it just would be really great to take limbs off. Half. I would love that, <laughs> dude. Me too. Just like, Ugh. oh, that would be fun. It would be great. I could stretch him anyway. Um, it would make traveling a lot easier. Anyway, continue. It would. Sorry. I could just be a torso on an airplane. My legs Perfect. up in that. Just soar the legs and arms up in the overhead. Yeah. Did you upset yourself yeah, with that image? I did. <laughs> so I did. they're making knockoffs so at they're the different stores because they're trying to imitate. And it, she was such like this, like so, almost like a so. She was around now. She'd be like a social media icon about like. Can yeah. you hear heard about this guy who has a fake chick that he just keeps pretending is real and everyone's in on it? And that's what got this. No, like, no. She would have her own real. She would have her own account that would yes. have. <laughs> 50 times more followers than any person (laughs) making actual things. It would be like, he would have none. He would have like no followers, but the Cynthia account would have. Yes, yes. 50 Uh, billion. Like 10 million. But we're seeing that And it would get sponsorship. But that's like that girl. That's what she's doing. The girl that just went viral. The one who spits on things and then people are like, oh, she just got signed to CAA. Yeah. She really got signed to. I think it was CAA or UTA, one of those. One of like the big agencies. Wow. But that's that's essentially the same thing. It hasn't really changed. But it's, I mean, that's no, a real I, person. Also, I don't know anything about that girl. So I shouldn't throw I, I don't know no, if, like, what her chill. deal is. Um, I, I have no idea if she had aspirations for anything else. I just thought that was I was like, what? <laughs> Signed the CAA. I will say I do, OK, I leaned into a viral video once that I had a viral video go a video go viral um, of my kid or my cat putting his paw in my baby's hand. Uh-huh. And then the, my baby closed her hand over the paw. And nice. then Battleship, but my cat Battleship got all cozy, and it was really cute. And some like agency was like, "Hey, you need to you need to like monetize this." And I was like, "All right, why not?" All... <laughs> and now my kid has like three hundred dollars in like an account from this viral video. <laughs> I'd like to think the person that called you up was just like, "Oh, you have a virus video, and I am Mantis <laughs> Toboggan, <laughs> Doctor Mantis Toboggan, MD." <laughs> Such a good episode. I love the. I love when they uh, whenever they use the videotape, the recorder again. They always. Yeah, yeah. There's always like the a same tape that they're piece. taping over. <laughs> Where D goes into the burning building, or like like um, kitten mittens. <laughs> just anyway. Uh, so just like um, AI women now who are kind of yeah. becoming these influencers, Cynthia was mm-hmm. kind of like a proto AI influencer, where we kind of projected all this stuff onto her and. Everyone was like, we have to get on board. We're going to make all our mannequins look like her. And what's his name? Lester. Lester, Lester yeah. was like, I'm going to ride this thing as far Lester as I Gabba. can. As he should. Yeah. He, and he made a ton of Gabba girls. And uh, 
they've all sadly disappeared. Like no one really knows where they went. Fall They're not on eBay or anything. No, <laughs> if they are, if somebody then... somebody used them to clean themselves off. Oh yeah, I think people. If look, if I buy a mannequin, I don't want to resell it somewhere. That's scary. I don't want to sell. I don't want anyone coming to my house to buy a mannequin. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're gonna make me that person's for sure serial killer. Yeah, exactly. They're coming for me. They don't want if the mannequin. If you're buying a mannequin off of eBay or uh, off of Craigslist, absolute yeah. murderer. Do Absolutely. Not. Don't or, sell them. Furthermore, I was gonna say if someone's selling them, that person's also. Bo- it's two murderers meeting yeah. each other, <laughs> trying to kill. E- yeah, and then they, yeah. they they see each other's game and they're like, oh, yeah, and then they fall in respect. love. <gasps> yeah, they fall in love and they kiss. And then they murder each other. I don't know oh, where this is going. Beautiful. Anyway, so around the nineteen <laughs> after the war, uh, yeah, the like I like the cutesy little like uh, interwar like um, sense of humor, irony, ironic artist sense of humor kind of died down after everybody came back from killing. Yeah, and they, oh, were, they like, came back with PTSD, oh, and now they're at, suddenly they like the American. horrors of war. <laughs> I I looked a man in the face and then shot him. Oh, yeah. I can't do it. Anyway, everyone gets back and they're like, we're kind of over the whole Cynthia thing. Yeah. And all we want to do now is have a wife that's lobotomized and go work at a factory or whatever. I mean, it sounds like they were still into the Cynthia thing, but they just wanted her to be not made of a, soap. A woman. <laughs> <laughs> One made of flesh. But a essentially ma- flesh, having all mannequin. the same characteristics. <laughs> yes. And still not talking. Oh, one more thing he said about her whenever we, there is he was at parties. He was like really funny. He's like, oh, don't mind her. She just has laryngitis again. And like always was like making up new excuses why she wasn't talking back. Uh, or like, she's a lady. She just, she's a good listener. What can I say? Uh, just stuff like that where everyone will be like, oh, <laughs> Lister. <laughs> Taking photos with a wax mannequin or a, anyway. So Lester instead is just like, okay, whatever. I'm over the mannequin thing. Now I'm yeah. going to become a person who just writes books about soap sculpting. And so he wrote a okay. bunch of books. He also became an artist and he started implementing all of his art into these window displays. And a lot of it was stuff that Andy Warhol would later go on to. Be I was I was actually by. thinking something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it does sound warhol It sounds like oh. whoever, like Nico or like and, all these random people yes. that were part of his social circles. And Lichtenstein, Roy Lichtenstein. So he was doing those comic inspired things in window dressings like 20 years before anyone else did it. So they all stole it. A little, I mean, Andy Warhol, that's the whole thing, you know? I mean, Warhol's whole thing is stealing, but... Yeah. Um, but he had this massive and invisible Lester, force. Lester, smart guy. Dude, yeah. Lester. And here's the thing about Lester is that he almost wasn't doing it on purpose. He just couldn't stop. Right. As you understand. Like, like a beaver would. Like a beaver. Lester's the beaver of the art world. And just like the beaver, he did fall out of an airplane. Oh, um, no. He didn't. He's fine. He died old. Um. So Good. Lester had this crazy, like unbelievable effect on modern art on fashion really cool. on yeah. um he invented the modern <laughs> advertising mannequin. Even. advertising yeah. viral yeah. marketing yeah which this is could easily be described as viral marketing as well as um he was like the father of the modern window dressing so mm. even today you can walk around and be like that's a bunch of weird stuff in that window and thanks to lester you know we have that, oh, yeah. I guess. Sarah Sarah loves that shit. Oh, Sarah's yeah. all about like really elaborate window dressing. She's obsessed because with then it. it's also a form of entertainment. People yeah, would go window the, walk, window shopping. The uh, the seasonal ones get really crazy too. Yeah. Like all the Christmas ones get really elaborate. Yeah, it's it's like Disneyland every time. Yeah. It's like it's gotten so over the top. It's, it's gotten great. insane. Well, Lester would love that if he could see it now. Yeah. He'd be like, "This is exactly what I wanted." Yeah, yes, uh, this was my was plan very, all along. He was over the top. There was like one he helped do where they actually made a real ski slope inside of the window. And That's people cool. could go practice. <laughs> anyway, and so he was a multimedia artist who was just kind of couldn't stop creating. Uh, yeah. And so he he Respect. they called him the Andy Warhol of the forties, which I think that Andy Warhol is the Lester yeah, Gabba of the sixties. The 60s. Lester Gabba, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And he was a lifelong bachelor, which meant yeah you know, he was gay. Uh, yeah. And he was most certainly, or he was rumored to have a relationship with Minnelli, uh, Vincent, yeah. Vincent Minnelli, Minnelli, but was unconfirmed. But after Vincent left New York, Gabba, like, holed himself up and, like, cut himself off for a little while because he was heartbroken. Mm, devastated. Um, yeah. And he was active in art and fashion for the rest of his life. He died in 1987 at the age of 80. And at the time of his death, he was actively writing very specific articles about window dressing reviews. So he, okay. would, he was like into window dressing criticism even yes. at that point. Yeah. That's he interesting. became a window dress criticism critic. He's he's like he's in it. It's not yeah. like just a it's like he's helping actually it's form like how you think about love. it. That's interesting. Yeah. 
That's crazy. He, and he genuinely felt so strongly about how ugly windows windows looked that he was like, I yeah. have to change all of this. I'm curious to yeah. read some of these reviews and like the criticism of it. I'm just, they like, have, I had never even yeah. thought about it. He uh, he was funny too. He was a very like funny, clever, yeah, like kind of force of creative creative energy. Um, but yeah, I, I ended up reading about Cynthia and being like, "Who's Lester? Why don't we talk about Lester? He's awesome." Uh, so that's my tab. <laughs> that's awesome. I like this and, guy, Lester Gabba. Yeah, we'll put He's some got pictures a great name. up. Right, yeah. Gabba girls. Yeah, I'm gonna put pictures up of all the the life the life photo shoot because Lester's in it. Um, he's like sitting next to her at the opera and like escorting her yeah. down the street. And there's one of him holding her, just her torso and her head and carrying her out a door. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just say, anyway, it's so surreal. And yeah. Lester is so funny. And the fact that his mom went along with it and everyone was like, this chick's real. Can you imagine real? <laughs> being like, hey, mom, can you take her to the salon? To the salon? My she mom would be like, I'm not taking this to shit to the salon. She's like, what are you do- talking about? No. I think his mom was like, whatever makes you happy, dude. Yeah, sure. <laughs> are you paying for my house in Missouri? I guess. I, I guess. don't really have a choice. You are my son, and I want you to yeah. work at the shop, but instead you're making fake women. Um, <laughs> Although, honestly, though, if she's getting featured in Life magazine and stuff, it is yeah. probably cool for her to like go to the hairdresser oh, yeah. and just be like, oh, check it out. This is the thing that my son made that's mm-hmm. real famous. Now you're all, it's a way to show off and yeah. sort of like stick it to people who doubted her son. So maybe that's oh, yeah. the angle. There's different ways to think about it. I think that she was supportive because she, did, she didn't complain. She was like, yeah, I'll take her on. I'll take her. <laughs> I want to I'm not paying for it, but I'd like to think that she had the same sense of humor as, as him. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, it's yeah, awesome. that's Lester Gabba. Go look up all of his crazy stuff. Love and, it. Thank uh, you I for sharing that. Sculpt some soap. I think so. you should. Maybe yeah. while we do our next tab, like next episode, like that one time where you sculpted uh, oh, yeah. the taco uh, mm-hmm. that I took a bite out of. Yeah. Yeah, you can um, carve out a nice, a nice soap thing, something or other. A soap um, beaver. Soap beaver. Okay, so. That's okay. the end of that. Wonderful. Uh, let us get to the point where we're going to close our tabs. Okay. What do we do? Oh. Uh, um, a mm. bomb, probably. A, bomb. a beaver bomb. I'm sorry, a, a bat bomb that's catching a, fire. Yeah. Or like. Or no, sound? shattering. No, no, no. We oh. should do Cynthia shattering. shattering falling on, over and shattering. So like plaster shattering on a, on a tiled floor. Yeah. Into a thousand pieces. Into a, it has to be a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> it's poetic. <laughs> You want to um, go ahead and count us down? Yeah. Okay. Three. Okay. I'm going to push Cynthia off this chair. Three, two, one. Death to Cynthia. Aw. Sad. Oh, no. My hair is ruined. My hair. My wig. My wig fell my off. Wig my fell. crumbled up face. Uh, All right. Anyway. Moving on mail. to listener emails. Email number one is Christina from Platteville, Wisconsin. Oh, cool. hey yo. My assistant Heidi and I work in collections at the Mining and Rollo Jamison Museums, and we love listening to your podcast while working. At first, I was worried about what Heidi would think of this pod, since my mother hates how much Kavis (laughs) wore in the Musical Splaining podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's apologies. Apologies to your mother, Christina. It was the only way I could get through talking about musicals. Notice how I don't swear on this podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, I took your lead because you didn't really want to swear. And I was like, well, I'm not going to swear a bunch. Oh, no, I'm fine swear. with swearing. I just was like, I'm probably not. Yeah. Um, no, no. I just I thought it would be weird and incongruent if I was yeah. swearing all the time. And you were I oh. just was like, well, it's probably better for the show anyway. But okay. no, I literally you, you I, if I did it through all of if the... I, I just swore through the entire four years of that show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you had to watch some stuff you didn't totally want to watch. That was the only way I could cope. But yeah. uh, yes, I have multitudes. I have many sides. I have a non-swearing <laughs> side of this podcast. So look at that. Um, <laughs> this is the time I'm non-swearing. It's on this podcast. So that's anyway. true. Uh, but Heidi and I are huge fans. Thank Aww. you. Hi, Heidi. Uh, at our museum, oh, you'll like this. We take guests 50 feet underground oh. and give them tours oh. of our 1845 lead mine. I love that. I want to go I there. Have you do. ever been down a mine shaft? Uh, I have been to caves and I get panic attacks because mm. I get claustrophobic. I cannot do that stuff. Makes Absolutely sense. not. Yeah. Uh, um, I love going in there. You have I went, fun. I, went I will be on the surface, not the being pit under the ground. In Wales, it was dope. Uh, good, good for you. Good for Thanks. her. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, in addition to talking about the history of, of mining in the area, we talk about the Tommy Knockers, <laughs> oh. which were part of a Cornish, which were part of Cornish oh. mythology. Everything about this is my my whole deal. Okay. Yep, that's why I chose it. These Aww. little dwarven creatures would play tricks on miners, didn't like whistling, and if you gave them the crust of your pasty, they would pasty. lead you to a rich pasty. Yeah. What is a pa I assume pasty would be a pastry, but not what is a pasty? It's, no, it's a Cornish uh, miner's lunch where it, they it's kind of like an empanada, but like savory and like full of like potatoes and vegetables and meat. And they like, uh, pasties are so good. You could just like, it's like a little taco. Sounds like an empanada. Yeah. It like, but, sounds like just like an empanada. But it's like filled with like delicious. Anyway, I went to a, I went to a pasty or I went to a Mexican place in York and they described mm -hmm. empanadas as pasties. So uh, spicy pasties. That's definitely a classification of food that exists across every, every culture, culture in the world. A little pocket full of meat. Yeah. Yeah. Pocket full of meat. Um, but if you gave them the crust of your pasty, they would lead you to a rich vein. Oh, uh -huh. After giving a tour, a guest told me South America also has Tommy Knocker creatures called mm. Mookie. Oh. So, of course, I had to open a tab for them. They can either be mischievous or helpful to the miners, and apparently they would also kidnap children. Great. <laughs> Unlike the Knockers, the Mookie enjoy whistling, and they wear ponchos while holding gas lanterns. Here are the <laughs> links for both. If you are ever in Platteville, huh? we'd love to give you all a tour. Thanks for the laughs and keep it Josie. Best, Christina. So there you go. You can go into the mines. The mines of Vordia. The, the mines of Platteville. Um, the mines of Platteville. And they will you give you it? such a feast in your honor. Whoa. That was good. Thank you. That was a good one. You got a good accent. You got a good, you got to do good. What is it called? Impressions. Impressions. Yeah. yeah. You got, yeah. If we were there and it was for the podcast, would you do it? Uh, I would. I would be above ground while you did it. It would be great. I don't think I would do Not it. even How, like, what, it, 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 what are we talking here? I'm like getting into like a little shaft elevator. and going down an elevator and then I'm and underground. You go down. It's tight yeah. underground or it's like open? Depends. The main shafts are large, but then they're a little like... Um, How far down are we going? Depends on the mine. <laughs> the one I went was like deep. Yeah, and I'm like, this is down, like the deep ocean. The I'm miners just like, were I don't just know like... For this. We were, we got on the elevator to go down, and everyone, yeah. um, all the miners that worked there, we were just bashing on Margaret Thatcher the entire way down. That's cool. They were just like, she should be down here. We should just dump, throw her down here. We're like, oh, yeah, I, don't, I love uh, you guys. I don't know. It's my combined claustrophobia and yeah. also being from California where I'm like, I'm going to die in an earthquake down here and oh, be trapped for forever. Sure, for sure. I just can't. I don't know if I can do it. But we'll see. We'll, maybe, maybe we'll do a show there one day whenever we get big enough to do live shows we'll go out uh me mediocre podcaster dies in mine collapse in platteville <laughs> relieves world of his presence thank you <laughs> no, christina I'm just talking to myself because oh, okay. you're not gonna go down there i'm dying in there that's true I'm not. okay but the so, one time i do okay anyway moving email on number email two. number two this comes from chris and chris does not say where they're from and chris says hello love the podcast it is a highlight of my week when a new episode is posted thanks chris the tabs I wanted to share are about Kavanaugh Altar Breads, the Rhode Island company that has a near monopoly on communion wafers. Oh. You know, those little like things they say are Jesus's yeah, the body. Yeah, little waffly yeah. things. Yeah. You put them in your mouth or whatever. Selling. <laughs> I don't know. Is there another? Dude. I was like, what, you put them in your butt? What are you supposed yeah. to do? Did you, you didn't know Catholics did that? I don't know much about what Catholics do. I don't either. <laughs> waffle time. I know I they know. eat like crackers and think it's flesh. Anyway. Wafers. Um, mm, you're right. Selling about 80% of the wafers used by churches in the U.S. It all started in 1943 when inventor John Cavanaugh Sr. created a modified waffle iron to mass produce mm -hmm. the wafers after yeah. the local nuns were having trouble keeping up with demand. Wow, the it's nuns were nuns. just... Ugh. Since the 1940s, Cavanaugh Altar Breads has expanded their product line to include things such as whole wheat and gluten-free communion wafers. Anyway, keep up the good work. I look forward to seeing the future of this great podcast. And there's a whole Vice article about the cutthroat business of communion crackers. <laughs> All I can see now in my mind is people going to church. And then when they get up to take their communion, just being like, uh, is this waffle gluten free? <laughs> is and this body of Christ gluten free? Because, gluten free. Uh, yeah. Body of Christ does not have no flesh doesn't have gluten. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know. I Maybe I'm Catholic speaking out listeners. of turn here. But do, are, do you even develop gluten when you're making these little waffles? There's no time for it. Gluten has um, to be like gluten gets developed and pushed. Like it needs time. I don't think you get gluten right away. Also, these things are mostly just like crackery air. and like I think they're just it's air. air. It's like flour and water. I've never had one, but 
You've never had a, a communion wafer? You've never even come across it? I've seen them, yeah. I just They taste more like plastic. Although I guess, I don't know <laughs> what it would have been. It tastes just like uh, Cynthia's body. Uh, oh, it's made of soap. That's what happened to her. <laughs> Zing, put it all in together. <laughs> nice. Anyway, I'm just rambling now about gluten. That's fine. Uh, Look, we need extra crap for the Patreon for every episode. All right? That's true. Uh, anyway, thank you guys. If you have a tab that you would mm-hmm. like to submit for the show, please go ahead and do so by emailing 500 open tabs at gmail.com. That's 500, the number. Let us know uh, what you learned. Just uh-huh. write a little brief, brief paragraph about it. Um, send us the article, of course, yes. and let us know where you're from because we love to know. Additionally, as we had with, uh, I think it was maybe last week's episode, uh, we also do voice memos. So if yeah. you want to write it out and, and speak it as well, keep it to it under a minute. We love to hear your voices too. It's so that's fun. also an option. And uh, if you want to follow us, it's 500 open tabs at on Instagram and, and whatever's left of Twitter uh, and YouTube. YouTube is fun because you get to see actually like pictures that we include. Like you get to see pictures of Cynthia and her arms being taken off, stuff like that. Yeah. And bats with bombs attached. To yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, additionally, we are we have a Patreon that yeah. you can donate to. Please help us. We're putting more stuff on there. Yeah. Hannah's putting a lot of stuff on there. I should say give credit where credit's Posting due. some like compilations of like, you know, things we cut out of the episodes and stuff like fun that. stuff we're getting there uh of course there's the discord which mm-hmm. continues to grow every day it's a great place to come chat about all just there's so many channels i don't even i go in there and i'm like what the hell is this shit i don't even know what it is there's some new channel and there's like 50 <laughs> people talking in there and i'm like i don't even understand what this is it's just like is this, crafting just showed up the other day and i was like what is this is this your first discord you've ever been on yeah i've never been on as a part oh, of a discord this like is this nothing before. Are there supposed it's, to be like 10,000 oh, oh. channels? There Discord some discords are so bloated you wouldn't even believe. Like I don't I don't understand. There's um, a way there's a way to keep it. Like once we get more and more there's a way to actually organize it so you don't feel insane when you look at it. So yeah, Well, I feel insane always even before well, yeah. I Discord. I just feel like I'm like, "Oh, is this bad or there are too many channels?" But I guess that's <laughs> no. what people want. People want it. Clearly, the did. people running this Discord, you and I are very good at Discords. Anyway, yeah. we have one. It's great. Yeah. It's a fun place to share stuff and learn about fry Each sauce. Other and linguistics, <laughs> and memes, and an, an insane <laughs> amount of discussion about Taco Bell. More than anything else, we talk about Taco Bell. <laughs> Every day, people are like, I went and had Taco Bell, and then they post pictures of their Taco Dude, Bell. It's there strange. Was that day I that love you, it. You posted, you're like, uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a road trip. I got Taco Bell. And like five of us ended up getting Taco Bell the same day. <laughs> And posting it. And then, like, someone's like, I guess I better go do it, too. And next thing we know, there's, like, more people being like, I gave in. I'm getting Taco Bell. Listen, and then there's, like, th- people who aren't from the U.S. being like, what is wrong with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> we opened the episode with Taco Bell and we're going to end it. If somebody <laughs> listening knows somebody at Taco Bell, we're already doing this. You might yep. as well. We can be like Cynthia. You can give us a card that oh allows us to just get free Taco Bell or give us sponsorship money, which would be even better. Yeah. But if you can't, I'll, at least maybe Taco like Bell can Cynthia, contribute to the I'll Patreon. I'll in your store. Perfect. You can shatter into a thousand pieces. <laughs> but seriously, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. I I will do whatever you want. <laughs> I will not do whatever you want, but <laughs> within reason. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, that's the Discord. Sign yeah. up for that. Also, we have 500 Open Roads, which is we the map. We need to map. update that. We do need to update that. It's been a couple of weeks, but it's fun. Yeah. Um, of course, we'd like to thank Alyssa, Alyssa for all of her hard work for putting this together. We'd like mm-hmm. to thank our patrons and we'd like to th- Patreonsins, Patreonins. Pa- we're going to do patrons. Uh, our patrons and of course all the listeners and everybody who contributes to the Discord and everybody who subscribes on YouTube and everybody who tells their friends Thank about you. the podcast because we keep getting emails being like, my friend told me about the podcast or somebody's in the Discord being like, my yeah. friend told me about it. So please, it's working. Keep doing it. It is. We love you guys. Please keep spreading the word. It's really helping us yeah. out. Please subscribe and rate and follow the sponsor links. Uh, Hannah has a, a book. Oh, I have it right here. I get to actually she finally show got the, proof. the camera. Oh, no, this isn't even the proof. This is the final book. Oh, it's the final book. All yeah. right. Well, So I got a book. It's, you can now see it if you're on the... Um, YouTube. YouTube. Uh, it's called Cat People, and it comes out October 8th, and it's right now you can do pre-order. And I think there's soon is going to be a pre-order thing where you get like a free tote bag or something. I, I don't... Ooh. I should read the whole email instead of just jumping to conclusions, but... You know. Anyway, Cat there's People... a book. There Cat it people, it's, it's check it out. Look. It exists. She did the work. I yeah. know because I got a lot of, lot of, lot of texts about it. Uh, a lot of talking off of a ledge, but I'm proud of you. It's really hard to finish a book. People Can't don't wait realize till you read the acknowledgement. 
Oh, really? Oh, no, I I'm excited. I think I may have said that exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Very exciting. Anyway, uh, you did, no, did I... talk me down a lot. Yeah. It's um, it's tough. I don't think people yeah. realize how hard mm-hmm. it is to finish a book, um, especially, especially um, one that's a comic book because yeah, people read them so quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. But this took me, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah. fun. I, honestly, we I think we talked about this at some point where we would maybe do a discussion about um, doing book stuff, like how you finish a book. Oh yeah. And if that's I'd, something you guys yeah. might be interested in, let us know. Because um, we come from two separate areas of it. Like you self-publish and somehow yeah. are able to make yourself publish a book, which makes no sense to me. If I don't have someone threatening me with a contract, I won't finish. Yeah. No, I threaten myself every day. That's what I get up every morning. And I'm oh. like, if you don't do this, you are going to shatter into a thousand pieces. Uh Yes, there's there's different ways, but a lot of the processes are essentially the same. It's just a matter of like outside accountability versus yeah. internal accountability. But the actual process of making the book is a specific one for very. artists that's very different from how you would write a book. Yes, and, uh, and people like my editor was like, "You're the first artist I've d- had a you know I've usually edit I usually the editor for writers, and so I'm learning too." Yeah, what this is all about, and it's way different. It's way different. It's very different. Yeah, yeah. it's not as simple as just dropping a bunch of JPEGs into a right. PDF and then hitting print. <laughs> it's it's me calling. What when I call you like late at night once? I'm like, I need to see him I need help with see him Oh no, yeah. it was. Oh oh, <laughs> I, I was gonna tell you this. This is. I'll I'll end with this story. We we're supposed to wrap like five hours ago. I don't care. I went to the Maurice Sendak exhibit that's at the Skirball Center in Los Angeles. It's incredible. Uh, you get go. to see all of the old uh, original pieces that he's done, a lot of the original um, uh, Where the Windsor Wild Things McKay. Are pieces. Didn't, wasn't there Windsor McKay Oh, and then he owned too? a Windsor McKay, that's and you right. can see his stuff. But, I almost um, died when I saw that picture. At multiple points in the exhibit, <laughs> there's like, you know, there's the little blurbs that are written mm-hmm. under the images. It's basically like... <laughs> Now I just think Windsor McKay, not Windsor McKay, uh, Maurice, Maurice Sendak. At multiple parts in the exhibit, it's like Maurice Sendak was upset with how the colors were printed of his <laughs> books. And he went back and had to do this other process so that the colors could be more accurate. So I was like, I looked at Sarah and I'm like, see, it's not just this me. Is, it's a whole thing. This it's is been happening for years. Forever. Yes. I, I don't think I've been as close to like a full blown meltdown and panic attack than I was when I looked at the proofs and the mm-hmm. colors weren't right. I almost yep. like... Oh, I, I and I fully you texted me and I was like, you have every right to be yeah. angry. I'm like, we have spent fuming. so many hours. Oh, I you were correct. Like detailed little things like, look at this. What's this? And you were like, hey, okay, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Do this. And it worked. I Thanks. knew a little bit. I've, I've been through this process yes. a few times. I understand. But yes, colors. That's oh, my God. It's not I, just as simple as having typeface. It's like yeah. you spend so much time getting oh, colors oh correct. And then they're, and they're, they're, like, not, they're not correct. Yeah, they're slightly off. But like that slight offness drives me insane. I can't look at it. I can't look I at it if it's like, that's not even, how did I spend this many hours on it to, to have it look? Yeah. Anyway. So if you're, if you're listening to this and you print stuff and you want to bang your head against the wall, <laughs> that's normal. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, it's just a process you have to learn. But anyway, congratulations again on getting Thank your you. book. Um, congratulations on having a release date. And Thank uh, you. I look forward to reading it finally one day, whenever someone gives me a copy of it. I'll, I can send you a copy. Send me that included- copy. I don't want you to have that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I send it to my friend. Thanks for listening. Thank you, guys. And of course, as always, keep it Josie, and we keep will see Josie. you next week. Okay. Keep it. Jo- what did I say? Keep it Josie. I Keeping did. Keep it Josie. I oh, you. It sounded like you were saying like you were correcting me, like no, I said no. it incorrectly. Oh no, I was just saying something and it didn't sound right. You know. Listen, I'm sorry. And you know what? You should be. I'm so mad at you. Keep it Josie with a Z, not C. No, 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 no. Keep it Josie. Well, that's not what you think. Anyway, thanks for listening. See you next week, everybody. Bye. Bye.